Hello and welcome to another episode of Other Items of Interest. I'm your host, Jack Sablocki. This week, alcohol flows from the taps. Florida man finds another Florida man in his bed. And what could possibly be in a bag labeled bag full of drugs? We'll find out. That and more this week on Other Items of Interest. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to another episode of Other Items of Interest. I'm your host, Jack Sablocki. Yes, what could ever be in a bag labeled bag full of drugs? I wonder. I'm surprised I'm uh, surprised, really. Um, I shouldn't be phased by any of this nonsense anymore. I still am. People are, can be, just really, really dumb. It's absolutely unbelievable how dumb people can be. And there's plenty of those stories today, and more. So we will get to that shortly. Yeah, I have nothing else to say, so let's just get on with it, shall we? I think we shall. Let's. Come on, everybody. Join the party. It's fun and games. Here we go. Here's a little bit of advice before we get into things. If you're going to record a podcast or just record your voice in general, don't drink something that makes your voice all phlegmy. It's just, it's not going to work out for you. You're going to be uh, stifled and uh, clearing your throat a lot. It's just not going to work out. With that advice in place, uh, we can move on, I think. From APNews.com, workers stole 17000 dollars worth of stuff on first shift. Police in Connecticut are trying to identify a man they say got a job at a gas station and proceeded to steal $17,000 worth of merchandise and cash on his first and only solo overnight shift before disappearing. The man also stole his company folder, which contained his personal information, so the store's owner does not even know the worker's name, Hamden police said in a statement Tuesday. Police responded to the Go On Gas store late last month. That's a dumb name for a gas station. Go On Gas? Go On Gas? Go On Gas store? No, no thanks. The owner told investigators he used an app on his cell phone to view the store security cameras and noticed that the new employee had left. The owner went to the store and determined that the worker had stolen lottery tickets, 89 boxes of cigarettes, and money worth a total of more than $17,000. The employee file was also missing. Uh, anyone who recognizes a suspect in the surveillance image released by police is asked to contact investigators. And there's a link here on the APnews.com website, which you can find as a link through our website, www.otheritemsofinterest.com. Uh, and, and while I'm doing this, uh, I completely forgot the beginning of the show. If you'd like to email us, you can do so at other items of interest pod at gmail.com. And there's an Instagram and Twitter, but you know what? Fuck it. Let's move on to the next story. From BBC.com Shock after alcohol flows from kitchen taps in Kerala. A pleasant surprise for those wanting a cocktail first thing in the morning. The smelly brown liquid began flat to. Uh, Not the way I would start an article. The smelly brown liquid began flowing from kitchen taps in the block of flats in Kerala on Monday morning. Bemused residents then contacted the authorities for help and discovered their water well had been contaminated by officials, albeit accidentally. It emerged 6,000 liters of confiscated alcohol had been buried nearby. Uh, And by buried nearby, they mean dumped into the ground. Uh, The alcohol, which officials had placed in a pit after it was seized on court orders, had seeped through the soil and into a well, the same well which supplied the residents of the 18 flats in Thrissur district with drinking water. We were so shocked, owner of the apartment complex told the BBC. Luckily, the strong smell put people off consuming the water. However, the discovery meant there was not only no drinking water for the families, but they were also unable to wash. The children couldn't go to school and even their parents couldn't go to work, a parent said. After residents complained, officials acted to rectify the mistake, 
but the process of pumping the well clean is likely to take a month, according to residents, leaving them reliant on deliveries from authorities. They've been supplying about 5,000 liters of water daily, but it is not enough to cover all the families in our building. A resident said, pointing out the well was their main source of wa water. Officials from the department did not respond to questions from the BBC. The state of Kerala has the highest consumption of alcohol in the country. It should be noted for some reason. Um, and that's that. My uh, The phlegm buildup in my throat is just is ridiculous. I, drank, I had a protein drink for breakfast, you know? And uh, thing, th those things are thick. So now I just have this thick, nasty phlegm buildup in my mouth. And it's fucking a pain in the ass to talk with this buildup. Um, yeah, Jesus Christ. You ever lose something and look absolutely everywhere for it, but just cannot find it? So what do you do? You call the cops to help you find it, right? Like 25 times? No, of course not. That's ridiculous. Well, from Cincinnati.com, man called officers 25 times asking for help, finding his hoodie, is charged with felony. A North Side man was arrested early Monday morning after authorities said he called the police more than 25 times to get help looking for a lost hoodie. Harvest Gardner, 32, faces a felony charge of disrupting public services. Police said Gardner requested police assistance and officers responded. When police arrived, the defendant only wanted rides around town to find his hoodie that he lost. Officers reported. This guy's a pain in the ass. Police said Gardner was highly intoxicated and officers told him to go back to bed, but he continued calling and gave different locations for the police to respond. Gardner is being held at the Hamilton County Justice Center. He is scheduled to appear in court Tuesday, which is today. Hope things are looking up for him. Hope he found his hoodie, too. That's, I mean, that's what's most important here. Did he find his hoodie or not? I don't know. From lost hoodies to finding things you don't want to find, from the MiamiHerald.com, a Florida man told cops he found a naked stranger in his bed. It wasn't pleasant. Most people wouldn't be happy with a naked stranger in their beds. Speak for yourself. Except maybe if the person were J-Lo or Brad Pitt. Um, okay. According to a police report from a Collier... Collier? Collier, sure. County Sheriff's Office. A Florida man had such an encounter and it wasn't pretty. Homeowner Brandon Hall told NBC affiliate WBBH-TV that he was shocked to walk into his Naples home around 3 a.m. last Wednesday and see a stranger in his bed, sans clothing. It wasn't pleasant, I'll tell you that much, Hall told the station. According to the sheriff's report, the nude individual was John Lyles, 38. Officers responding to Hall's 911 call found the man lying supine in the victim's robe, exposing his genitalia. A deputy asked Lyles if he knew where he was and the suspect stated that he did not. We would later find out from John that he had been walking through the woods and brushed completely naked. Read the complaint. The South Carolina... South Carolina was taken. The South Carolinan was taken to a local hospital for evaluation. After his medical release, Lyles was handcuffed and taken to Naples Jail Center for processing. During the ride, the affidavit states he attempted to tear the patrol car apart and periodically burst into a manic laugh. Hall reported a PlayStation 4 was missing and later recovered outside the home's window. Lyles was charged with burglary of an occupied dwelling, criminal mischief, and petite theft in the first degree. He was released on $2,000 bond. I don't know what people do. I really don't. Um, just in all walks of life, I have no idea. I, I, people confuse me so much. I don't I don't know what to think anymore. I really don't. Would you do everything Google told you to do? I thought not. 
From KSTP.com, man rescued after attempting to cross river in Minneapolis, stated Google Maps told him to cross. A man was rescued early Saturday morning after he fell partially through the ice on the Mississippi River near the Stone Arch Bridge in Minneapolis. According to Minneapolis Fire Department spokesman Brian Tyner, at approximately 3 a.m., crews responded to the area of 550 West River Parkway on a report of a man who fell through the ice. The man reportedly told authorities that his Google Maps told him to cross the river. Officials said the man, who is from out of town, was heading back to his hotel. He was transferred to the hospital with mild hypothermia. And that's that. Okay, from WFLA.com News Channel 8 on your side. Florida troopers find narcotics in bag labeled bag full of drugs. Go figure. Two men were not discreet in their plans to sell drugs in the Florida panhandle, according to officials. I don't think there's any place on earth that I'd rather not be than the Florida panhandle. It just seems like, uh, from what I've read and from what I've heard, the worst of the worst. Just redneck country. Uh, If I'm wrong, let me know. Tell me. If you're from the Florida panhandle and it's just a paradise, uh, email me if you know how to write. Uh, Florida Highway Patrol arrested two men suspected of drug trafficking after troopers pulled them over on Saturday and found drugs in a bag labeled bag full of drugs. Troopers made the discovery after the men were pulled over for speeding on I-10. The Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office assisted in the search of the vehicle, which turned up methamphetamine, GHB, also known as the date rape drug, cocaine, MDMA, and fentanyl. Uh, Here's a quote from the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office posted Monday night on social media. Note to self, do not traffic your illegal narcotics in bags labeled bag full of drugs. Our canines can read. A little cop humor there. Always always uh, looking forward to that police humor. You guys are crack-ups. Okay, next story. From ctvnews.ca, the Russian Orthodox Church thinks it might be time to stop blessing nukes. Now, we did a story uh, regarding this uh, last summer, summer of 2019, uh, where younger clergy, um, rightly so, found it a little hypocritical that uh, they were men of God and blessing um, nuclear missiles, uh, weapons, vehicles and stuff like that that were used to cause harm and destroy people and other nations. So, uh, and there's a picture right up top of the website of a, um, of a padre flinging holy water at a jet. So, the Russian Orthodox Church has proposed a stop to the practice of having priests blessed weapons of mass destruction though sprinkling holy water on planes and ships is still deemed appropriate. The church on Monday published a draft document outlining its role in blessing Orthodox Christians who protect the fatherland and carry out their military duty, inviting Internet users to discuss the proposal online. Russians often ask priests to bless anything from new cars and flats to Soyuz spaceships in the belief that the jester bestows divine protection. Right. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, priests have also begun blessing troops, planes, and ships, and all sorts of weapons from Kalashnikov rifles to nuclear-capable ballistic missiles. But the document proposed that blessing any type of weapons, the usage of which can inflict an indefinite number of deaths, including weapons of indiscriminate effects or weapons of mass destruction, be removed from pastoral practice. At the same time, it remains appropriate to bless transport used by soldiers on land, water, and in the air. To ask God to protect the men using them, it said. The Russian military has forged ever closer ties to the church under Defense Minister Sergei Shogu? Shogu? Shoigu? No idea. Don't care. Who is overseeing the construction of a huge cathedral for Russia's armed forces outside Moscow? 
It is to be opened on May 9th, the 75th anniversary of the Soviet victory, victory over Nazi Germany in the Second World War. Soviet victory. Okay. Uh, since 2010, the military has inducted priests into its ranks, including an airborne unit, which can deploy with mobile inflatable chapels. Mobile inflatable chapels. Yes, you heard that right. I read it correctly. Um, like I said, I just don't, I, I don't, I don't understand people and a lot of things. Sometimes this would be one of those times. Hey, it's time for science news. No more dumb people bullshit. None of that. We're going into some interesting science news. From the dailymail.co.uk, British scientist says it is almost erasing certain that the icy seas on Jupiter's moon Europa are home to alien life that are octopus-like creatures. How about that? Monica Grady, who the chancellor at Liverpool Liverpool Hope University suggests the icy seas beneath Europa's surface is a prime location to find beings with similar intelligence to the marine mam animal mammal. Good God. Uh, marine mammal. Octopus. What are you thinking? All right. Grady also thinks that the deep caverns and caves on Mars may also be harboring life forms as these areas provide relief from the intense solar radiation. When it comes to the prospects of life beyond Earth, it's almost erasing certainty that there's life beneath the ice on Europa, she said. Elsewhere, if there's going to be life on Mars, it's going to be under the surface of the planet. There, you're protected from solar radiation, and that means there's the possibility of ice remaining in the pores of the rocks, which could act as a source of water. If there is something on Mars, it is likely to be very small, bacteria. But I think we've got a better chance of having slightly higher forms of life on Europa, perhaps similar to the intelligence of an octopus, not a marine mammal. Let's just make that clear. I, I misspoke. I'm sorry. Although the idea of octopus-like creatures living on Jupiter's moon may sound far-fetched to some, it was the plot in the 2013 film Europe Report. Europe Report? Or is it Europa Report? I, I really don't know, and I don't feel like looking it up, but uh, I've never seen the movie. It's a... Uh, um, here, they go into the, in, into the plot of the film here. In the film, six astronauts embark on a privately funded mission to Jupiter's moon Europa to find potential sources of life and stumble upon octopus-like creatures living beneath the surface, exactly what Grady, who is also a professor at the Open University, has suggested. Why reference a movie like that? I don't think it's that popular of a movie. What the hell? I guess it's, it's the Daily Mail, so fuck it, I don't know. NASA's Hubble... <laughs> here's another, NASA's Hubble, NASA's Hubble, Space Telescope. It's the way it's written. It's the way I'm going to read it. I don't give a shit spotted the presence of sodium chloride, also known as simple table salt, on the icy planet's surface last June. While the oceans are beneath Europa's surface, the exterior is basically made up of frozen seawater. This means that below its icy exterior, there's likely to be a vast salty sea containing large amounts of sodium chloride. Jupiter's icy moon Europa is slightly smaller than Earth's moon and it orbits Jupiter every 3.5 days. It is thought to have an iron core, a rocky mantle, and a surface ocean of salty water like Earth with ice flowing underneath. Um, you know, I, I don't know if any of that's factually true um, because it's the Daily Mail and the article has kind of been a fuck up thus far. So take all this with a grain of salt. Ah, you see what I did there? Grain of salt, sodium chloride, and the vast salty sea. There's a theme going here. Um, as for what's beyond the Milky Way, Grady said the environmental conditions that led to life on Earth are highly likely to be replicated elsewhere. Our solar system is not a particularly special planetary system as far as we know, and we still haven't explored all the stars in the galaxy, she added. That's a given. Um, but I think it's highly likely there will be life elsewhere, and I think it's highly likely they'll be made of the same elements. Humans evolved from little furry mammals, 
that got the opportunity to evolve because the dinosaurs were killed by an asteroid impact. That is probably not going to happen on every planet, but it's at least possible based purely on a statistical argument. Whether we will ever be able to contact extraterrestrial life is anyone's guess, purely because the distances are just too huge. And as for so-called alien signals received from space, there's been nothing real or credible, I'm afraid. This year, three separate expeditions are headed to Mars to search for signs of life. The ExoMars 2020, which launches in July, is a collaboration with the European Space Agency and the Russian space agency Roscosmos. NASA's new rover is set to make landfall on the Red Planet in February 2021, and the Hope Mars mission funded by the United Arab Emirates is set to launch in the summer. Meanwhile, Professor Grady says that by looking at the bigger interplanetary picture, Earth's own ecological situation is brought into sharp focus. She says, we could be all there is in the galaxy, and if there's only us, then we have a duty to protect the planet. I'm fairly certain we're all there is at our level of intelligence in the planetary system, which is the most depressing sentence I've read today. Um, and even if there are octopuses on Europe, octopuses, octopi. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to go into a science article, especially from the Daily Mail. Uh, and even if there are octopuses on Europa, that doesn't give us a reason to destroy our planet. Um, and that's it. Um, not the greatest article, but um, interesting. Space octopi. I uh, wonder what they taste like. I apologize for that last statement. I do not want to eat any extraterrestrial life. Um, that is all. story of the week from CNN.com, CNN Health. Yarn made from human skin could soon be stitching up your wounds. Now this isn't yarn made from other humans' skin. Uh, we'll get into it. It may sound like a gruesome detail from a dystopian movie, but a team of scientists believe yarn grown from human skin could soon be used to stitch up surgical patients and repair organs. The researchers say their human textile, which they developed from skin cells, can be used for knitting, sewing, and even crochet, and can aid a number of medical procedures. The string-like substance would have the ability to truly integrate into the host's body, the team from the University of Bordeaux in France said. This novel strategy holds the promise of a next generation of medical textiles that will be mechanically strong without any foreign scaffolding, they wrote in their study, which was published in the journal Acta Biomaterialia. Yes. These human textiles offer a unique level of biocompatibility and represent a new generation of completely biological tissue engineered products. They added, unlike synthetic material currently used in most surgeries, the futuristic yarn wouldn't run the risk of causing a detrimental reaction from patients' bodies, the team said. Most permanent synthetic biomaterials are recognized as foreign by the innate immune system, which leads to the well-described foreign body reaction upon implantation, they wrote. Images of the yarn produced by the team show a number of ways in which it can be stitched and manipulated. This material can be used as a simple suture to close a wound or can be assembled into a fully biological human tissue, they wrote. Last year, scientists developed a new bioglue, an experimental adhesive gel that is activated by a flash of light to rapidly glue a wound together. How about that? That's very interesting. And I think it's a good place to end the show. With as much stupidity as we covered, it's nice to see technological and medical feats such as this. Well then, I think we're at the end of our show and ready to say goodbye. Uh, short show again this week. Not a lot of great news. There's still, you know, presidential impeachment. There's uh, Democratic primaries. There's the Oscars this past Sunday. Um, 
not a whole lot in the weird news department, sorry to say. And like I said last week, I'll say again this week, maybe next week will be better. And we'll see you then. If you'd like to visit us online, you can do so at www.otheritemsofinterest.com. If you'd like to email us, you can do so at other items of interest pod at gmail.com. You could visit us on Instagram at other items pod and on Twitter at other items. So visit us if you like. Send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. Until next week, we'll see you around. Cue the music. Welcome to the end of the show. This has been Other Items of Interest, and I've been your host, Jack Sablocki. Now we can all move on with our lives from this crazy shit show and do something productive. Have fun. Live your life. See you next week, folks. Bye-bye.